Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing all the good stuff we were doing as far as our DCS 0 to Ace. And we're going to be moving over to the C-101, which is a two-seat training airplane. And like I said, there's a free trial of it if you want to give it a try. It's something I ended up buying because I spent enough time with it. We're going to be moving away from the basics of flying and kind of moving a little bit into the actual basics of combat. So what I've done is I've taken our little map that we had before and I'm simply going to bring in that C-101. So I'm going to go and click here. I'll set back to Russia. Again, this is just the way I like to do it. You can do it however you want to. Go ahead and select us. Make sure it's a client. I'm going to go to Krasnodar Center. Go ahead and drag us to a nice logical place on the ground where we can get started too nice, quickly, and efficiently. That looks pretty good. I'll do takeoff from ramp, and that looks pretty solid. That's everything I need to do as far as getting this one set up. As far as munitions and all that other fun stuff goes, I can have a lot of fun with this. I can do a Russian combat fictional if we want to get a little old school here. And of course, you have a bunch of different guns and things like that. Uh, when you're first starting out with this aircraft, uh, the only thing I like to really do is increase its internal fuel. And I usually like to go ahead and carry a couple of fuel tanks if I need it. The nice thing is at any point, you can go ahead and right click on any of these and you can go ahead and see exactly what they can carry. This particular aircraft does not carry external fuel tanks. So it's actually got to be a little bit easier for us to fly. And I think you're going to kind of like it. Other things I'm going to do while I'm kind of sitting here inside the mission editor is I'm just going to go back over and double check. Notice you can do failures directly here. We can also go to the radio and pre-program the radio channels of the airports that we're traveling to. So in this case, our channel one is always going to be where we're starting. So in Krasnodar, we're interested in this one here, a 251. So I'm just going to click here. I'm going to go ahead and change the radio to 251 as my default. And then under buttons, I'm just going to make sure 251 is going to be my channel one. Now my channel two is going to be uh, where we're going to be flying up to, which is going to be Galenzik. So I'm simply going to click right here. I'll go ahead and create myself a couple of little waypoints. We'll do add. Go ahead and click one over here, Krimsk. And I'm also going to come down here as well. Set this as landing. So now if I come over to Gallon Sync, I can see that it has a 255 as its frequency. Simply going to pop up here, change the second channel to 255 so that I know that it's going to be the proper channel for me. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this option here. I'm going to set this to be a solo flight. Don't worry about this too much. We can play with this later on. I'm going to shut this one off because we don't need it. And obviously the uh, G NS430, don't worry about it. I just say not installed and not have to worry about it. So now our aircraft is uh, ready for testing. I always like to go ahead and set this as well. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. All right, let's go ahead and pop over to the simulator itself now and actually kind of take a look at what we're getting ourselves into in our intermediate series here. All right, now we're moving on. Now, this aircraft is a two-seat trainer aircraft. It's extremely similar to uh, what we saw earlier. The only difference is, if you just look down for a second, the instrumentation is uh, Western, and it is also quite a bit more intense. Uh, the reason I love this as an intermediate trainer is there's so many different things on it that you're going to see when you move up to bigger and badder airplanes. And it's just, like I said, it's absolutely a great way to kind of get the hang of things. Like, I love just the pilot. And the cool thing is we can jump in the back seat, but since we made it a solo flight, we cannot. So we're just going to kind of hang out where we are here. So, so there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind now that we're moving on to an intermediate aircraft. Uh, the first thing is our controls have just gotten significantly more complicated. So I'm going to press escape, just controls. I'm going to go to C101CC. Now, the most important controls you want to set are going to be your axes controls. In this case, I can see that I have a little red light here warning me that uh, we've got a bit of a problem with this axis. I'm going to go ahead and clean that out real quickly. Go to my throttle axis here. I'm going to go just program it by moving my throttle. And now I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tune this combo axis as well. I'm go ahead and invert that sucker. And now we're going to be all set. All right, that looks like it's all set. So I like the way that works. Give everything a quick little twist to make sure everybody is moving as far as the way we want it to be. Ah, perfect. Excellent. Wheel brakes. And notice we have a separate wheel brake for up and we have a separate wheel brake for left. So it's a little bit different. I use the one combined wheel brakes here. You can do whatever works best for you. So other controls we're going to be interested in this one for sure is uh, we're going to need a trigger. So uh, you want to go ahead and double check to make sure you have a fixed weapons trigger. Now on this particular aircraft, it's split. You have the fixed weapons trigger and you also have the weapons release. There is a separate button for that. And you'll see when we move over to the F-16 that they're also going to be different. I also have several buttons for opening up different guards. And this is going to be kind of interesting because there's actually switches you have to get out of the way in order to actually activate your storage release. And we'll take a look at that later. On the F-16, you have its own little twist on that and we'll see that a little later. The other one I really like to do is, of course, have my trim. I have my up and down. I also have my left and right wing down. If you do not have that on your joystick, it is not the end of the world. The uh, combination is listed right here. It just means you're going to have a little bit more work for yourself as far as controlling that goes. Other things we're going to need, or we're going to have to deal with landing gear like always. I have one for up and down. The other one we're going to need is flaps, in which case I'm going to have one for previous and next. And something brand new, air brake. 
we're going to need to have an air brake switch that we actually have the ability to control the position of the air brake on the aircraft. Now, air brakes are amazing because um, normally an air brake refers to an air brake like on a truck. In this case, this is something a speed brake designed to help slow us down. It's actually a pretty slick technology that we have at our disposal here. The other switch that you're going to want to have uh, handy on your thing is going to be the MPR switch. The MPR switch is basically going to give you a little bit of takeoff boost power. Now, this thing is powered by essentially a glorified vacuum cleaner, so you're going to appreciate having a little boost from time to time. Other switches on here, of course, you can do things, like I said, for the safety. You can also have a button for centering your view, which is something that I really, really like to do. But other than that, that's basically as complicated as this aircraft is going to get as far as having your different switches goes. So once you're happy with it, you can just go ahead and bop the OK button, and uh, we can take a look at our little aircraft, give everybody a little wiggle. So one nice trick that I highly recommend everybody press is if you press a right shift P, you can hide your pilot. It's super fun to look at your pilot, especially in VR, but when you're trying to push buttons to actually learn how to fly this thing, the pilot can get in the way. So kind of keep that in the back of your head. You're gonna end up with this uh, strange little uh, floating something right here, but again, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's not gonna cause any issues. All right, so starting a jet is not the same thing as starting a little propeller jockey. There's a lot of systems on board this that you're gonna have to get the hang of. And uh, even though we're gonna move to the F-16 later, some of this is actually going to be consistent no matter what type of jet aircraft you're flying. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm actually going to go ahead and make sure my parking brake is engaged, which is gonna be this big handle here. Disengage, engage. It's just a big old handle here, nothing special. We confirm that the throttle is off. Now this is interesting because this particular one, we can actually switch modes on by left clicking on it. You wanna make sure it is in the off position and you'll see exactly what I mean in a minute. The F-16 has started the exact same way. We always like to double check the ignition switch is gonna be set to the center, which it is. We're also gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and make sure the starter switch is to the normal position, which is exactly the way we have it right now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna ask the people on the ground to plug in a battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the communications button, which is a uh, backslash, not a backspace. Ground crew, I'm gonna say ground electrical power, and I'm gonna say ground electrical power on. You can only talk to them if the window is open here. So they're gonna go ahead and plug us into this giant machine, which is gonna give us a little bit of electrical power here. Yep, there's the magic box, and now we are charged up and we have ground power. Now you're looking around, um, you're sitting there going, um, what was that ground power supposed to do? Well, nothing. The reason nothing came on is because even though it's been charged, we haven't actually activated the ground power. So now that this is all set, uh, let's say the word on will be extinguished. So again, if I click on this real quickly, you can see nothing bad happens. I click on it again, nothing bad, there it goes. And now our ground power is on and providing us electrical power for this entire aircraft, which is actually pretty wild because we can sit here all afternoon and play with our settings without ever worrying about running out of battery power, which you will do at some point, I'm sure. So now that the on light is extinguished, meaning the GPU is, again, you've got a pretty good idea of exactly what that does. And we've got all sorts of warning lights and everything popping on just to give us a heads up that kind of lets us know. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go double check to make sure our compass setting is set exactly the way that we need it to be set. Like I said, it's a pretty straightforward aircraft, so even though it looks intimidating, you're going to see a lot of this stuff is going to be behaving exactly the same way that we saw in other aircraft a little bit earlier on as well. So with that all set, let's go ahead and take a look here. We're going to see here HRS is our compass mode switch. Now this one has a really neat system. I'll pull this out of the way. Ugh. You can see we have our IFF panel here. We have our little compass, which is actually the same as it was on the Yak. You can put it on directional gyro mode. You can put it on slave mode, in which case it's going to grab stuff off of our compass for the purpose of driving the directional gyro. You can even do things like set the magnetic variation. And look at this. We even have a latitude control just like we had before. And you can see we've got the little dot to tell us what latitude. In this case, our latitude is about 45. We are in definitely north, so we're going to make sure that's set correctly. And again, that's exactly what you could probably expect that it was from before. So now that we've got that all preset and ready to go, we're going to go ahead and flip on a few lights. Now, this is another big difference. Lights on this aircraft are right over here. We have our anti-collision light. We also have our formation lights. We have a couple of navigation lights. We'll turn those on as well. We can even turn the cockpit light on, or you can do the flood light. Completely up to you. You can turn your console lights on. You can turn on your instrument lights. You can do any of these that you like. Again, it's, again, whatever you want it to be comfortable to. Next thing we're going to see, which is a little different, is you have this little magic box here. This is the audio panel. Now, in the F-16, you're going to see something very similar to this, and you want to be careful with this. First one's going to be your overall volume. You're going to want to make sure that's set. Each one of these switches refers to the individual volumes. For example, if we want to crank up this uh, DME switch, I can hold my mouse over it, wheel the mouse. It's going to make it louder, make it quieter, whatever you want. This big old switch right here allows you to select what mode your intercom is going to be on. In this case, if I switch it to INT, you're basically going to be on the intercom mode, which gives us the ability to talk to the folks on the ground. Again, you can set whichever one that you want. You can set their individual volumes. You can even press them in or out if you want to turn them off completely, depending on exactly what it is you're trying to do. Once it's all set, now we're just going to go ahead and get this thing rolling, which is pretty easy.
pop over here, uh, you're gonna have a bunch of different switches. Uh, the most important one, of course, is going to be our battery switch, which you're gonna see uh, right there at the bottom. It's just the one right here. You just click it on like that. That's it. There, there's just not a lot of excitement. <laughs> That's all it does. Remember, we're using electrical power off the ground here, so uh, things are gonna run a little differently. Next switch we're gonna go ahead and hit. Uh, we've got these uh, handy dandy generator switches here. Keep in mind you have two. You have a voltage one, and you have the actual generator switch. And then you have this handy thing called a bus tie. Uh, what this is basically going to do is this is uh, simply going to say that um, you're gonna link the two electrical systems together. And again, electrical systems get very complicated depending on the aircraft that you're flying. Remember, you can skip this whole process by pressing the Windows key and then pressing home, and it will fire everything up for you pretty much right away. So what we're gonna be interested in doing is we are gonna turn in the bus tie. Like I said, we wanna link these two systems. Remember, even though our battery switch is on does not necessarily mean that we're running off of the battery. In this case, remember, we're running off the GPU. How do we know? It has the word on. <laughs> that's all we need to know as far as uh, making sure that's confirmed. So electrically, uh, now that that's all set, we have a couple of the switches we can play with. Uh, we have our inverter switch, which is uh, located a little bit above it. Of course, um, we don't need to touch that one, but I'm going to pop that up. And now we've activated all the electrical systems that require AC. We're going to get about a thousand warning lights. Go ahead and tap them on real quick to make them go away. Notice our ball immediately starts hunting. Notice our directional gyro, which is electrically powered, starts hunting as well. Everything starts going. Like I said, it's a little different in the F-16, but like when we get to that particular point, you'll see exactly what I mean. Normally at this point, you can go ahead and adjust your seat position. Uh, we like to make sure the engine computer is working. Uh, very important. Uh, you'll get a big angry light right here to say that it is working. You should have your systems as far as fuel switch and everything like that should be in the off position. So to do that, we just flip up the glass, click on it, problem solved, click on it, problem solved, we'll go ahead and close this glass, I'll need to stare at it. Basically, if the light is off, that means we did something correctly. You can see each one of these switches has already been switched to the on position, making sure all those different things are on. If we want to check to see how much fuel we have in the fuselage, we can click here. You can see right here how much we're carrying. I can shut that off and we can take a look at our total fuel as well. And now we have everybody's scary part, which is going to be uh, making sure that we have fuel capability to uh, move around in the rest of this particular aircraft. Just confirming here, the fuel switch looks good, fuel switch looks good, fuel tanks are good, fuel shutoff valve, everything is looking good. Uh, we are all set and we are finally ready to go ahead and get this thing rolling. So uh, rolling this thing is, like I said, it's a pretty straightforward process. We're simply going to spin the engine and then when the engine gets up to a certain speed, we're going to introduce fuel and a little bit of a spark to get the whole process going. So the way this works is it's a combination of pressing the starter and then coming up here and monitoring the engine speed. Uh, once the engine gets going enough, you're looking for about, let's say about 10% or so on this instrument here. You can go ahead and click on this to actually disengage it so it actually begins a turn up, sending fuel to the engine. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to come over here, we're just going to come to the engine start button, and you right click on it once, it's going to start spinning up immediately, we're going to wait to about 10%, click on this once, you can see immediately that I've got temperature, meaning that there's fuel flow, you can see my N2 is spiking, you can see my oil pressure is spiking, you can see my M1 is spiking, you can see everything is coming up instantaneously, you can even see that my oil pressure, everything's come up just like that. And that is really all there is to getting this thing started. Uh, generally, when you hit the start button, by the way, it's recommended to go ahead and uh, hold that for two seconds rather than just tapping it like I did. That's considered sloppy and bad form. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, now that it's been done, you can see that all my instrumentation is working perfectly and uh, we're completely on our own electrical power. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and flip on our generators and we can go ahead and disengage the GPO. Now the aircraft itself is on its own pressure system. Now there's a couple other things we're gonna to have to do here. I notice I have two warning lights here. One says oxygen pressure, the other one says canopy. Say, hey, your window's still open. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna go double check to make sure, uh, oh, look at this, a big old remove before flight here. Go ahead and pop that little needle out. Whoop, of course, when you go to pop it, you wanna be careful that you don't click on it. We're gonna turn on our oxygen switch, which is gonna be this one real quickly. We're just gonna look around, make sure everything else is in the good plane. We don't need to play with the emergency fuel lever. Looking down below my feet, that all looks pretty good. That looks pretty good, looks pretty good. We're gonna yell at the ground crew to disengage everything. Ground crew, ground electrical power, off. So what they're gonna do now is they're going to disconnect me. And that's it, we've been disconnected. So now it's just a matter of uh, going ahead and closing the hatch on this thing, uh, closing the hatch. Again, it's the same way as we did before. We're gonna press Control C, it's gonna slap that hatch down nice and tight. After we close the hatch, we want to go ahead and click on this handle to basically lock it closed. Now, of course, if it's an emergency, we can pull this handle, which is going to inject it, but that, that's probably not recommended at this time. So looking down, all my warning lights are disengaged. There are no orange lights that tell me that I've done something wrong here. My throttle is neutral. Everything is pretty much ready to go. Looking around here, i just like to confirm that everything looks all right. No angry orange lights, no angry orange lights. we got our two landing gear. We've got everything else set, our air to air. 
master mode, with different switches, different lights. So we have a gun sight for those of you who are so inclined. Of course, you're sitting there going, it's so hard to see. You can just uh, go hold that control shift down arrow to go ahead and move your head down so you can actually see the darn thing. But again, we'll be dealing with guns and sights like that a little bit later on. And we are ready to rock. Just taking a quick look, checking everything. If we need to go ahead and uh, call up the radio station that's available, you'll notice that the radio has already been pre-selected. The only thing we have to do over here is actually turn the darn thing on. Now, of course, if we uh, grab the radio channel, we can actually call them up and say, hey, is it okay if we actually start up? But at this point, we've already started up. And the only time you really need to worry too much about the radio is if you're in a multiplayer situation. But again, you got yourself a radio here. You've also got all the radios and fun things in the back. But we'll take a look at that next time. Enjoy.